everybody, I am That Nursing Prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about metabolic acidosis. So let's get into it. So how does this happen? How does this work? So a couple of things. There's either too much acid being produced or you're not getting rid of enough acid. And usually you're not getting rid of enough acid because you have poor kidney functioning, usually related to like chronic kidney disease, which causes a loss of bicarb. So if you remember, bicarb and acid, they work together, CO2 and HCO3, they work together and to keep things in balance, right? We want our blood to be a neutral. And when it's off balance, that's when we have issues. So we have too much acid production or decreased acid secretion. This will lead to a decrease in the pH of the blood. So the blood will become more acidic. The lower the pH, the more acidic. So your normal kidney, so a normal healthy kidney, the way that it works is it will increase its ammonia production to help decrease our dietary acid. But if somebody has decreased kidney functioning, they're not working as well, their kidneys aren't as healthy, the body will develop a buffering system. And this is the body's way of helping itself, okay? So we're gonna develop a buffering system with bicarbonate. And there are four buffering systems. There's the one with bicarb, so that's the HCO3. So we're losing too much of it, so the body goes, oh no, no, we need to make more. We need to produce more. That's gonna help the problem. So we'll produce more bicarbonate, kidney compensation. There's also respiratory compensation in the form of hyperventilation. So what happens is the body recognizes, hey, there's a problem. My blood is supposed to be neutral and it has now become acidic. So I need to bring that pH up. And what am I gonna do to bring that pH up? I'm gonna start hyperventilating. So breathing faster and having deeper breaths because that is gonna cause me to get rid of some of that CO2 and hopefully bring my blood up to that neutral level like it's supposed to be. And then the final buffering system that occurs, intracellular buffering. And what they do, various cells in the body, will start absorbing hydrogen ions. And that is to help kind of control the acidity of the blood. So this is kind of the concept behind metabolic acidosis and how it works in the body. Now let's talk about the causes. When we talk about the causes of metabolic acidosis, we need to talk first about the anion gap because this is going to help us determine the issue. So first of all, how do we figure this out? We're gonna subtract the sum of the chloride and bicarb from the sum of the sodium and potassium levels. If that is greater than 14, Normal levels are 10 to 14. So if it's greater than 14, that means the patient has what's called a high anion gap. And that is going to let us know what type of acidosis to treat. Because remember, it can be from an increase in acid or you're not getting enough uh, bicarb or from a loss of bicarb. So we need to know what the cause is so we know how to treat it. So the two categories here, so the high and then the normal. So in high anion acidosis, this is an issue because too much acid is being produced or not enough bicarb is being produced. So that is the issue. And this can occur in things like diabetic ketoacidosis, renal failure, lactic acidosis, certain poisoning, so poisoning from like carbon monoxide or cyanide can cause this. Overdose of salicylates, so like aspirin products or menthol. Long-term use of things like acetaminophen. And having a high-fat, low-carb diet, which is actually a really popular diet these days, right? That caveman diet, that high-fat, low-carb diet can cause metabolic acidosis. So we need to figure that out first so we know what to do. 
And then in normal anion acidosis, this is all caused by a loss of bicarb. So your body makes the normal amount like it's supposed to, but it loses too much. And the ways it can lose the bicarb include things like diarrhea, drainage from a fistula or like an ostomy, if you have Addison's disease, too much of a saline infusion, so we're giving them too much fluids, or overuse of diuretics. This can cause a loss of bicarb for our patient. And I do have a little memory tool for you to remember all of the causes of metabolic acidosis. The way you can help remember the causes of metabolic acidosis is the word acid. So A-C-I-D. A stands for aspirin toxicity, so overdose of aspirin, too much aspirin. And it also stands for abnormal passageways, like a fistula. C stands for carbohydrates are decreased and fat is increased in your diet. I is insufficiency of the kidneys, so your kidneys aren't working as well. We see this in chronic kidney disease. And then D is a couple things. So D stands for diarrhea, drainage, usually from things like an ostomy, and diuretics. So these are the big causes of metabolic acidosis. Now let's talk about the signs and symptoms. Now let's talk about signs and symptoms and testing for these patients. So a big one is Kussmaul's respiration because the body is breathing more in an attempt to blow off more CO2. The patient might have weak pulses, like peripheral pulses might be thready or hard to find. They might be hypotensive, so low blood pressure. They might be hyperventilating for the same reason, right? They're trying to blow off that excess acid. They can report muscle weakness, bradycardia, so a slow heart rate. Their skin will be dry and flushed, and they can even have a decreased level of consciousness. Some testing we can do for these patients includes, of course, the big one, ABGs, right? We need to know that pH level. We can do a BMP, so a metabolic panel to get our electrolytes. We can check for ketones in both the blood and the urine, so we can do a blood test or a urine test, usually they'll do both. Lactic acid testing, so we want to know those levels because lactic acidosis could be one of the causes. They might want to check the pH of the urine. Toxicology screening, so especially if this is caused by like too much like drug use, like the salicylates or even from the poisoning, right? So toxicology screening can help kind of determine what the cause was based on those sorts of things. Too much Tylenol, too much aspirin, cyanide, things like that. And then imaging of the kidneys. So we want to see how the kidneys are functioning. Are they functioning normal? Are they healthy kidneys? or are they having a decrease in function, they're not healthy kidneys. So these tests are going to be very helpful in helping us determine the cause. Because remember, specifically with this one, there's a variety of different causes, and so we need to figure out the cause so we can best manage the treatment. And now that we know that, let's talk about the nursing interventions. Now let's talk about our nursing interventions. Assessing the respiratory system, making sure that their lungs are working well, because remember, the respiratory system is going to want to compensate for poor kidney functioning. So if the respiratory system also isn't working very well, then we have a bigger problem on our hands, right? So we want to assess the respiratory system. We want to monitor their ABGs and electrolytes. Assess their neurological status and assess for safety. We always want our patients to be safe. They might need to be put on seizure precautions. And remember, for metabolic acidosis, there are a couple of different causes. So our interventions really reflect the cause. So we're not going to do all of these things for every single patient. We're going to use the ones that are most appropriate for our patient, depending on the cause. So for example, if the cause is renal failure, they have poor kidney functioning, they might need to be put on dialysis. If the cause is like diabetic ketoacidosis, 
we're going to want to give insulin, right? So we're going to administer the things that they need. We can also administer sodium bicarb. So if it's a loss of bicarb, there's not enough bicarb in their body, we might want to administer some sodium bicarb. And if it's a dietary issue, they have that high fat, low carb diet, we want to do education about their diet. So we want to encourage an increase in plant-based proteins, not animal-based proteins. Decrease the fat and increase the carbs to a healthy level. So teaching them about dietary education. And what happens if we don't do these things, right? So what's the big deal about metabolic acidosis? If we don't do anything to treat it, a couple of things can happen. If your kidneys are already diseased, you have renal failure, then it'll get worse. So decrease kidney functioning. It can lead to osteoporosis. Remember in the beginning of the video, we talked about the buffering system. So the acid buffering can lead to bone loss, which can lead to osteoporosis. So the patient is more likely to have things like broken bones and fractures and things. It can lead to muscle loss due to that decrease in the protein. Slowed growth, if this is happening to a child, they might not develop normally, they might not grow normally, and even death. If you look at the statistics for somebody who has acute metabolic acidosis, it's not good. The prognosis is usually pretty poor. There is a high morbidity and a high mortality rate with these patients. So it's very important that we as the nurse know what to recognize and know how to help them. So that was my video. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.